All right, what's up, everybody? It's Jack and Dan. What's up? We got we got Jack in the, the uh, passenger seat. He's filming today. Just picked you up from practice, right? Yep. And we thought we would use this as an opportunity to answer a lot of questions that we had and do a follow-up on the 2018 Chevy Volt. These primarily applies to the Volt, but a lot of these types of quote-unquote plug-in hybrid type of cars, electric slash plug-in hybrid, even though they're all very different, um, from what we've researched and talked to people about, these same principles seem to help a lot with all these kind of cars. So hopefully this does. Um, again, the Chevy Volt's value continues to soar due to the fact that so many people don't want to go completely electric yet, but don't want to pay for all the gas. Um, it's kind of the best of both worlds because on your day-to-day, -day, you use electric. And then, of course, if you take trips or if you go beyond that or if it's really cold or really hot and you're using more energy with the heat or air, you know, you, you have the gas as a backup. So this is most of the driving that we do is city driving like this, stop and go, right, kiddo? Yeah. Going back for to practice, going back for to school, running errands, going to the store, going to the gym, all that kind of stuff. So for us, this car is pretty much perfect. When we first got it, we got about 60 or so miles on a charge. <laughs> now, after, um, what's it been, four and a half years now of the winter time and the summertime, you know, that's down to like 40 ish and then that changes depending on the weather but in cleveland here we don't get a lot of mild weather right no it's either cold or hot well yeah yeah <laughs> this yeah there's not a lot of like windows down kind of weather it's either the heat's on or the air's on right there's not a lot of in between yeah. so that does affect of course the mileage and the energy and how much your battery is going to average um and also if you do a lot of highway driving use a lot more energy we try not to, we don't do a lot of that, but then we can you know, go into the gas. But anyway, we're gonna show you guys a couple principles here and how easy this is to do. As we're driving home here, it's uh, kind of like a perfect example here of, of how we do this. One of the things that you can of course do is, if you look over here on the screen, if you hit this old energy thing here, I've got about, mm, I've used about a third of my electric because I had to run a couple errands before getting Jack. Now, we don't use a 220. We never did because I work from home and I'm at home a lot. And so I just plug in and I always kind of get a full charge. We have state, we have used stations before and they are faster. So this is going to tell you if you go to a station right now, even though it's 545, it's 38 degrees out. So we do have the heat on a little bit. Um, we're gonna charge by seven o'clock if we go to like a station or have a 220. If we stay on eight amps and we plug in, we're gonna charge by 12.30 in the morning. Okay, which that's pretty good because obviously that's way before we're gonna wake up. Now you can hit on this eight amp and it's gonna tell you that if you change it to 12 amp, you're gonna stress the building's electrical system a little bit more than a typical household appliance. Um, I used to do this a lot. I did stop doing it because when Pamela got her Jeep, uh, we were blowing the breaker when we both tried to charge at the same time. But if I keep it on eight amp, it, that doesn't happen. Now we have an older house and we of course could, you know, figure out a way around that and, you know, probably change some things or whatever but we didn't want to and I don't really need to charge a 12 amp but I'm gonna go back just to show you the difference if I were to charge a 12 amp it would be done at 10 15 instead of like 12 30 so just shave off a couple hours what people have said about that like engineering type of people is that because you're charging faster you're using less energy and paying less money even though you're at a higher amp because it's taking less time to do it does that make sense yeah, yeah, it does. I mean, you know, it's not a big difference to me, honestly. I just plug it in when I'm home from when I'm sleeping or if I'm home and it, it stays in the green uh, most of the time. So anyway, that's the difference there. And we do recommend doing that. It's a really good thing. The other thing is to do, if you look at this flow, 
you can see, so I've got about, I don't know, maybe two thirds of a battery here. You can see that I'm completely on battery power right now. Now, when I let go of the gas, it's gonna do regeneration. It's gonna say, hey, we're gonna give you some regeneration. So that's the brakes. Uh, well, I didn't actually even hit the brakes, but that's just the, me the mechanism of the car slowing down, pushing back on the alternator and all of the mechanisms of a hybrid car, kind of pushing energy back to the battery. Now, if you look down here, you can see that one of the things, one of the other tips that we did is we put it in low. And a lot of people have told us to do this and a couple years ago we started doing it and we've seen a difference. The difference is, is you're gonna get more kickback, more regeneration because your car is slowing down a little bit more aggressively, a little faster. And the bonus of that as well is you don't have to use the brake as much. You can see, if you look at this car in front of me, I just let go of my gas. He's got his brake lights on, I do not. Now I'm just hitting my brakes just right before I get to him, but that actually slows me down quite a bit and I'm regenerating more. Plus you have that bonus of the one foot driving. The other bonus is of course, you're not using your brakes as much. We got 50,000 miles on this car and last time I took it in, which was like um, about seven or so months ago at the end of summer, and they were like, your brakes have hardly any, you know, any breakdown. And they're, you know, four years old at the time. So it does save your brakes and you by using the car to slow it down. Does that kind of make sense and everything? Mm -hmm. It's pretty simple to understand. Um, the reason that we started putting in a low is because people made comments that they were doing that. And we saw a lot of people posting about that. And it was making sense to us. And so we started doing it. The other thing you can do, of course, is there's this paddle over here, right? So you see right here how there's like these battery controls. You can't see the paddle on the other side, but it's very similar, a little lever. The other thing you could do is let's say that I start coming up to a stop. I can not only have it in low to slow me down and regenerate more, I can pull this paddle. It's very easy. It's just a little paddle. You press it. And what it does is it it's like applying the brakes, but a little softer. Oh, there goes my fuel thing because I'm <laughs> I'm down uh, low on fuel. Um, the last time I filled this, actually, we're going into April. Last time I filled this was before Christmas. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's quite a while. So that's three months or longer because we didn't take this on any trips or anything. Now, during the winter time, that's amazing because I let it go about seven gallons. It's an eight-gallon tank. Uh, a gallon reserve, so nine gallons total. I let it go to about seven, like when this light turns on, uh, sometimes before, and I refuel it. And I only have to do that every three or four months, but to go the winter time, because the heat uses so much more energy, to go the winter time is rare. But this was a pretty mild winter, and we didn't really take any, uh, you know, trips. And I don't really use the heated seats or the heated steering wheel. It did come with that. I don't really use it. I know Pamela likes the heated seat, but me and you don't really like no, it. No, I don't really like that much. It just gives us like swamp back, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, a lot of people like it. It is nice to have, but I don't, we don't really use it. So cutting down on those things and all that. So anyway, that was a really impressive winter to get that kind of, uh, you know, th three months of winter or longer. And it, my life's just going on now. Kind of good timing that we we're doing this video and that went on, huh? Mm -hmm. But anyway, back to what we were saying, the paddle plus the low gear helps tremendously. Um, you know, and again, the other thing is, is if you want to charge, if you have a newer house, you could do that and you would charge faster. It does shave off more time and it does save you a tiny bit of money. We have solar panels on our house. We're not too concerned about the cost of charging these vehicles. We really don't have much of an electric bill at all, even though we have two plug-in hybrids. And I know people are gonna say in the comments, Volt is not a plug-in hybrid, it's an electric car with a generator. But from a user standpoint, and from an electrical draw standpoint, I mean, that's, they still all work kind of the same, right? Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we will be doing a video on uh, Pamela's Jeep. She got the first electric Jeep ever, it's 2022. And, uh, it's, uh, it's working out pretty cool. Doesn't go as far as this does on a charge because it's bigger, right? This thing's like, I look, think I looked it up, three and a half thousand pounds. I think her Jeep's 1,500 pounds more or something like that, right? 
it's obviously a lot bigger, bigger tires and all that stuff. So it just, um, you know, it, it doesn't get as far. But they are making a lot of improvements these days with all these kind of things. Um, the other thing uh, people had questions about was that 200 hour, uh, remember the extra charge we have to pay for when we get the uh, thing. So that is still there. It's still annoying. We're not as annoyed with it as we used to be because gas went up so high. And then I looked on the old OnStar. I get a monthly report from OnStar and I'm actually up to 93% electric in this car. So only 7% of my driving is gas at this point. Again, with COVID and everything, didn't take a lot of trips. And also we've had milder winters. A lot of times in the winter, the engine will turn on because it is so cold and it doesn't, you know, to heat up and everything. So again, with the weather being warmer, not taking trips, I'm hardly using any. 93% was impressive. Or don't you think that's higher than you you would think? 93% electric, dude? Yeah. I mean, I I would think it would be more. I think the last time we looked it up a year or two ago was like 80%. So it's actually gone up, which is really impressive. So hopefully things continue to do well. But we wanted to go over those tips with you guys. If you have not tried these things, the other thing is, is if you're looking for a car like this, check out Carvana because there's a lot of volts on Carvana from people who are going completely electric and they want to get rid of their volt and they're actually selling for almost what we paid for them. Um, this car right now, 2018, with even more miles than this, are going for more than what I paid for them after the rebate. Remember, when you buy a car like this initially, you get seven and a half grand back on your taxes. So I didn't pay 34 grand, I paid 26 and a half. And they're selling for like 25 and 26 right now, even being five years old and even with more miles than this because people want them so bad. So it's kind of nice to know that we have a lot of value in this car. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. But ultimately, this is most likely going to go to Jack. You know, you're looking to probably inherit this, right? Yeah. <laughs> because it's awesome. You don't have to, you know, get gas and stuff. Most likely, um, we're going to try to do that and keep it in the family. And then if I do go completely electric, we'll be able to still use this for trips and things like that. So anyway, we want to do an update on how the car was doing. Four and a half years old, 50,000 miles. We're using the low gear. We're using the paddle as much as possible. I'm still just charging on eight amps because I don't want to start a fire at the house. We got an old house and things. The other thing is, is we have a video going to be coming up. We're going to be taking a short trip to Pennsylvania. And what we want to do is we want to test this theory. So we're going to be removing the variables. We're going to go all the way to Pennsylvania, about six hours in drive. And then we're going to just, you know, zero everything out and then refill. And then when we come home, we're going to come home in low or vice versa. And I know it's not exactly the same. It won't be exactly the same temperature and exactly the same traffic and all that. But hopefully it'll be close. And we want to do and we'll be doing a video on that to see just what the miles per gallon is. And it's going to be in hold the whole time. It's not going to be electric at all. So it's going to be in hold the whole time. We're going to see what the difference is. So that video will be coming up, guys. So make sure to like and subscribe so that you see that video when it comes up. And uh, we'll see how it all works out. We'll see you guys next time, guys. Thanks for watching and take care. Bye-bye.